Hello, I'm Joseph, and this is just another update on the Frost Engine. Now, I've, um, I'm a little late on this video, and that's because when I was going to originally push it out, I was like, hey, I got Linux support. And that was really it. Um, I wanted to go a little bit further than that, get a little bit more um, kind of stuff to go in. And then um, a couple days ago, when I was going to release the video, um, I put it in release mode just to do a quick little benchmark, and it was crashing. And so I spent... Um, some time just reformatting all this code, recombing all over all of it again to see where it could be potentially crashing at. And the crashing was only happening in release mode. It was not happening in debug mode. <laughs> so not the, the greatest thing um, to be dealing with. But here's what I'll say. Um, I do have Linux support. It is both XLAN or X11 and Wayland. However, I'm not going to be focusing on Wayland for the initial like 0 0.5 release. And that's simply because there's more work that needs to be done. The windowing or the decorations, this kind of, you know, thing where you can like move it around, minimize and stuff like that is not present on Wayland. So on GNOME and KDE, you can, you can spawn the window, you can get your game to work, but you can't move it. You can't close it, or at least use the X button to close it. You can't full screen it. You can't do any of those things. You can't resize it. Um, and that's because I have more work to do on that part. And I, I'm just not really that entertained to do that right now. I, I need to move on to other things to keep my mind going and not lose kind of um, momentum in me working on this. So what I've done beyond that is I now have the ability to go ahead and pass in events because I've been setting up the global event queue. Um, so here, when I click in an area, the bunnies add in that specific area. Really nice. Um, how this is working is I have a global queue set up that I will redistribute to other queues, which will act as message passing to other subsystems in there. And this is because in PHP, you can do a lot of things to break the game engine. And I wanna make it very hard to do that. And if with message passing, um, there's, there's almost nothing you can do to potentially crash it because it's all copying data around stuff like that. Um, so here's an example where I'm using SDL uh, to detect key up and uh, this is key down. And then I have mouse button and mouse button up and mouse motion and mouse will. Uh, that's the job file stuff. But basically it just takes the original event from SDL and chucks it into a global queue. And then down here, um, I go through that queue. So I go through each items and dequeue it. And this is just a global one. So technically if I was to move an event into the physics section or audio or texture loading, those would be copied into those respectively. Um, but here would be an a, queue, uh, a queue I'm, I'm setting up for PHP to be processing. So actually, you know, I take in uh, the item and then I recast it as the event for like keyboard event. Uh, and then I generate PHP arrays out of all that. So all the sub arrays for the key scan and stuff like that, um, virtual keyboard. Oh, actually, this is this is all wrong. Uh, I'll just go ahead and fix this now. You see nothing unused. So yeah, a uh, little bit, a little bit of copy pasta, copy paste it, pasta it stuff there, but who cares? Um, but yeah, so it just generates all that and then chucks it into a, a function that you would implement called Frost Events. I originally had this as Frost Event, but I'm actually sending batches of events, so it's going to be multiple events all at once. The, the the thing about this though is that it will trigger multiple or it can trigger multiple times before a single update function so um, previously i showed this off the frost update um, you can pass events back and stuff like that from the update here but you can also pass events back from the frost events it's the same system of parsing events and stuff like that and the idea here would be that okay if let's say you wanted to move uh, something in this event, but still have uh, feedback to come back to you before something else. Like you want to, you want to send a movement to the physics engine to to do something. I don't know, uh, and have that information come back before you render it again. Uh, you could technically do that if you wanted to. Now, you sh should you? No, not really, because honestly, you should be doing this in the update function here. Uh, this is just for you to be able to process process events. So, for example, this is all really rough, like the frost events, mouse down, value crap. This is just a PHP enum. Um, but you can kind of get it. And then I set it to my global world state to see if mouse click is pressed and grab the X and Y position. The clicks will be like, if it's a single or double click, which is the actual button that's clicked. So I, I don't care which one is clicked. Um, actually it's not which is button, sorry. And uh, yeah, so 
pretty straightforward. And then for the uh, the bunnies, normally would have just add it as is. Here I'm I'm checking if it's pressed, and then I grab the world positions of the mouse click X and Y. So uh, fairly straightforward in that regard. And like I said, this can be executed multiple times before you get to that update. The update will only ever be called once. And the idea is that this will facilitate message passing. Um, with that, when I was um, trying to get some um, the bug stuff to happen. Um, one thing I, I ran into that I, I couldn't get to work was checking if the function exists or not. Um, and that was because in uh, PHP, when you have your function defined, you, you define it as like frost event with a capitalization and stuff like that. In C code, it's, you do not pass that in with capitalization. All the lookup tables for PHP functions are actually all lowercase. So I figured that out. And when I was doing all of that and trying to reuse this function to also use it for frost events, uh, one thing I was doing here was I was putting uh, this here and then I was passing it into here like this. And on the bug mode, it was working just fine. I mean, there's no errors that have happened. There's no warnings, nothing. Uh, it looks just great. But when I put it into release mode, which is what it is right now, it would cr crash on any event that was there. So if I go ahead and just recompile this real quick, when I go ahead and just move my mouse, it just crashed this <laughs> right away. Okay, let me try this one more time here. Uh, yeah, no, okay. Basically, if I put this now in the bug mode and I try this one more time, it should technically run. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't running previously. So yeah, there's running. It was fine. It's slow, but it's fine. Um, and then on release mode, it crashes. And that's because this gets scoped out when compiled uh, because it, it is scoped to the if statement. And it was really dumb of me, but it was really difficult to find out and figure out what the hell was going on and why it was going on in that way. Um, and so... What I what I'm doing was finding out that the way I'm calling these functions in C++, um, they should not be reset every single time. Um, so when I do an execute function, what I was doing was I was taking the environment here of the function and the return value and the cache and everything else and just completely clearing it out on every single function call. Now, if you're reusing this for different function calls, yes, do that. But if you're using it for the same function call, technically you shouldn't be doing it because you're losing performance that way. Um, FCGI or FCI cache actually caches the lookup of the PHP function. So by me not resetting it, I can gain some performance out of that and not have to waste time looking up a function in PHP because it's already been found. It already knows where it's at and knows how to call it. Um, and so what I end up doing is having a uh, multi, just like a, a list of, of functions pre-initialized here. So now I have all my functions that I would expect you to implement, which is currently only four. Um, and then uh, I just go through and iterate through that and generate environments for each one of those functions. So previously I had one environment that I would reuse, repurpose, and just clear out for every function call. And now each of those individual functions have their own environments, improving crash time, improving lookup time, uh, giving some performance benefits from there. Now, when I tried to do a benchmark, uh, my original video showed like 18 frames a second for the array code stuff. Um, it's like 10 now <laughs> because I'm adding all this other stuff. So it's not really a valid um, uh, thing for me to test for anymore because I don't have a good benchmark until I get to like a, a point to where I have everything implemented. There's no real I, um, goal or reason to be doing benchmarking uh, at this point because I don't have uh, a good idea of like where, where my foundation is make sure everything's working or at least working in, in what I think works um, and then setting up the benchmark and doing it that way. But beyond that, everything's all, you know, kind of still set in stone. I'm still chugging along forward. Uh, I'm just hoping I don't run into another issue where it's crashing and I have no clue as to why it's crashing. And then I'm combing through all the code with a, you know, fine tooth brush um, just to find out where I went wrong in something.